Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss payback period. In this video, we will define the topic of payback period, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of payback period falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. The payback period, sometimes referred to as the payback method, and capital budgeting refers to the period of time required for the return on an investment to fully cover the sum of the original investment. So let's run through the general workflow. The goal of a payback period problem is typically to determine how many years it will take for the benefits of the project to fully return money equal to that of the original investment. In other words, how long it will take for the benefits to repay the original investment. Time value and salvage value are typically disregarded in these problems, and we will strictly be assessing the annual benefits while ignoring any interest payments. There are a couple ways that we may see these problems written. One way would be when the benefit cash flow stream is uniform. In this case, all that needs to be done is to simply divide the initial investment by the uniform annual benefits. This will give you the payback period. The second way will illustrate a benefit cash flow stream that is a mix from year to year. In this case, we just need to manually add the noted cash flows up until they are equal to the initial investment. This is the point that will define the payback period. There isn't much to solving these types of problems. Essentially, once we determine what we are dealing with, a uniform or mixed cash flow, we can move forward with determining the number of periods it will take to pay off the original investment. So let's run through an example. A construction project has the following cash flow. This columns the year, the cash receipts, and the costs. So the period is 10 years, 0, 1, 2, all the way through 10. And our cash receipts will look like this, zero, $150,000 in the first year. And that will run all the way through year 10. And then our cost, our initial cost is a $1,000,000. Um, and then our cost thereafter is 40000 and that runs from year one through year 10. So what will the payback period be for this investment? So here's the solution. The goal is to determine the number of years it will take for the benefits of the project to completely cancel out the costs of the project. The first step is determine the net cash flow by year. So what we will do is add another column called net cash flow. And each year we'll just determine what that is. Uh, in year zero, it'll be negative one million because that's cost going out. In year one, our net cash flow would be 110,000. And since all the benefits and receipts and costs are the same through year 10, they're uniform, our net cash flow is also uniform, 110,000 all the way through year 10. So observing the net cash flow, we note that a net profit begins flowing starting in year one and continuing annually in a uniform manner. This allows us to simply take the initial cost of the project and divide it by the uniform annual net benefits to determine the number of years, such that the payback period is equal to the initial project cost divided by the uniform annual net benefits, which is equal to 1 million divided by 110,000, which is equal to 9.1 years. So the payback period for this project 
is 9.1 years. There aren't many ways to err on a problem like this. They are pretty straightforward. The most common is to just fail to account for all the cash flow receipts and costs year over year. We may fail to account for the additional money going into the project annually, which affects our net cash flow. By doing this, we incorrectly realize a greater positive cash flow than is reality, which will throw off our analysis. Some may also just simply add up the total project costs over the duration of the project and divide that by the total uniform benefits. For example, in this problem, we may take a million dollars and add the yearly costs over the remaining years, which are 110,000 for 10 years, to get $2.1 million total project cost. We may then go forward with adding up the total benefits for the duration of the project, which will be $1.5 million. To determine the payoff period, we may then divide the total project costs by the total project benefits, which will give us 1.4 years. From simple observation, this answer can quickly be eliminated. However, when time is of the essence, this is a fairly easy trap to fall into. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.